Momiji-Died-Kurt, domain of an artifact set that can be used by nearly every character in the game. Like seriously, it's actually ridiculous how versatile the Shimenawa set is. The other set however is quite the opposite. Unless you like to experiment with weird setups, like this gene here for example, this set is pretty much only viable for the Raiden Shogun and her trusty support, Sarah Kujo. This domain features a leyline that buffs pyro and cryo damage, but only if you stand on the right platform at any given time. This restriction makes it actually less desirable for starters to take advantage of, because you are wasting more time by moving and waiting for the enemies to follow you, than you gain by the 60% elemental damage increase, and if you are running characters that already have an increased elemental damage from other sources, like Kutau's passive for example, uh, this bonus is even worth less due to diminishing returns. Let's take the Sutao for example. She currently has 46.6% pyro damage bonus. Assuming we deal 100 damage pyro baseline, we would now deal 146 damage. Now we're gonna drop below 50% HP to trigger the passive and increase our pyro damage by 33%. She now has a total of 79.6% pyro damage. Because the bonus was additive. Our Hu Tao would now deal 179 pyro damage, which is compared to 146 damage only a mere 22% increase despite the skill saying 33% more. That is called diminishing returns. Now if we position ourselves into the ley line effect, we see that we now have a total of 139.6% pyro damage bonus. Meaning our little walnut would do 239 pyro damage. Comparing this to our Hutao with 179.6 damage, that is, compared to the advertised 60% increase, a total of just 33%, or about half of what it sounded like. Now of course 33% is still pretty damn good, but probably not worth the effort to grab if you have to traverse the entire domain for it. Now that you have your bachelor on maps, let's talk about the enemies in here. On the highest difficulty you will encounter two electro slimes, which of course are immune to electro, as well as an electro lava troll, which has a 50% resistance to physical damage. After defeating the slimes, you will be greeted by an electro abyss mage. Inside the bubble, the abyss mage is fairly easy to dodge. Just either stay really close to him or pretty far away. His electro ring can stun lock and kill you pretty fast if you get caught by it. The second to last difficulty version of this domain features five electro slimes and, after defeating them, two of those abyss mages at once. Which I personally find way harder to deal with than the one lava troll mage combo. But that's just personal taste, I think. The Lava Troll is fairly easy to dodge, as long as you actually prioritize dodging over damage. And trust me, if you just start out on Inazuma, you probably want to prioritize that dodging. Generally speaking, if you want to squeeze out as much damage as possible, the enemies in here have 10% less pyro than cryo resistance, so do with that info whatever you want. Let's talk about team comps. The Abyss Mage's shield and the high physical resistance of the Lava Troll make physical damage dealer pretty unattractive, but still an option if you have a completely bonkers one build. Like for example an Eula. Or a Razor, although I wouldn't recommend Razor. Additionally, the Electro Slimes and the Mage's shield once again also deter any Electro user from joining the party. Surprisingly, the Lava Troll does barely have any Electro resistance though. I also wouldn't recommend Animo, or at least not Swirl damage as a main source of damage, as you are more likely than not just gonna Swirl Electro around, which will barely do anything. That leaves only Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, Geo, and in a future far far away, maybe also Dendro. The only real Hydro damage dealer would be Tartaglia, and if you have him built, he could work. For Pyro and Cryo however, there are endless options on who to pick, listing them all would probably double the length of this video, but I'm sure you can judge for yourself which of your Pyro or Cryo characters can deal a decent amount of damage. If your main damage dealer of choice has any downtime in their damage dealing rotation, then of course bring a second one to fill that gap. And if they both happen to be Geo, might as well throw in a Goro for that full Geo experience. And yes, I tested it, full Geo works perfectly well even against the Mage's shield 
You basically just cleave it down passively while attacking the lava troll. And once the shield is down, focus the mage with everything you got before he shields up again. Because that would waste a lot of time going through that shield twice. The remaining slots of your team you can fill with any support you want. Personal suggestion would be one healer, just to save a bit on that sweet madame. And one damage supporter, be it a reaction helper like Zhangling, Xingxu or Kea. Or just straight up a damage increaser like Mona and Bennett. Personally, I wouldn't bring crowd control like Venti or Sucrose, since Roll will be doing barely anything and the Lava Troll, as well as the mage in his bubble, are immune to crowd control anyway. The healer slot could even be replaced with any Geo character, as the damage in this domain, as long as you are decent enough with dodging and positioning, remember, either hug the mage or stay far away from him, nothing in between, is so low that the crystallized shields should be enough to cover you. With all this in mind, let's check out some team comps with these tips in action.
Hope you found this little guide useful. I'm planning on doing this for almost every farmable domain, so feel free to leave a like or subscribe to not miss out on them. If you are in dire need of a guide for a specific domain, leave it in the comments and maybe I will prioritize that one. Until then, have fun and adios.